Hello everybody, welcome to Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around Fantasy Premier League. Keeping my distance today, James. Good morning, Sage. Why are you wearing a mask? Uh, because I tested positive and negative and positive and negative <laughs> and negative and positive. So I was, I'm positively negative. I'm pretty okay. positive that I am negative. Do I need to leave? No, 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 no. We don't need to worry about that. Welcome to Planet FPL, everyone. Suj's, Welcome to Suj's, Planet FPL, Suj's the world where everything was from our fantasy Premier League. Hyun Ming Sun failing a COVID test and scoring on Sunday. Is... Failing is one F word you could use. Oh, okay, let's say that negative. Faking is negative. another. Faking. <laughs> I saw people who nah. took minus fours to get him in and then another minus fours to get him out. And I feel so bad for them people because I don't even think they did wrong. This is one of them weird ones where actually having the information hurt. And it, it, sometimes it does happen. Yeah, it, I'm, I blame Spurs fully. I think it's all Spurs' fault. Okay, blame Spurs. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't give a shit. And Son. I, you can blame them as well. Bastards. Don't give a shit. Trying to dupe Newcastle. Trying to make them think that Brian Hill was not going to play. Did <laughs> well, he come off the bench? No, we didn't even make a sub in the game, mate. Ah, oh, fair play. Uh, Planet FPL end of game week something eight isn't no, it there's one more to go tonight Arsenal Palace that's obviously. true are you all out what did you score no not yet 43 I am on uh, 49 sorry 49 uh, must have had a bit of BPS kick in uh, and that's off nine players as in it's actually off seven players but I had two no shows at the weekend being Rafinha and Jota I think a lot of people struggled with those uh, obviously Rudiger didn't play uh, and my bench was particularly weak Brandon Williams has lost his place and Bissouma's just coming back from um, off field offences off field offences he's, he's I think he was carrying a bit of a knock as well right or not oh, maybe yeah he was he's, he started training this week so it's kind of one of those where my bench is actually alright but it just happened to not be the week for for it uh, so I'm, I'm on 49 off 7 which any given week is decent I mean Clean sheets for Cancelo, Trent and Sanchez. Captaincy for Salah. And that's that's pretty much my game week. Um, front line of Tony, Antonio and Ronaldo was a washout. But it was for many people front lines this week. So, How many did I score? I can't look. I can't get any reception. Sure, <laughs> um, and I'm, to be honest, I'm struggling to see because I just put a bright light on. And I've got a dirty, bloody hangover at the moment. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to make Joe suffer for the think entire show. I am 44. On, no, I'm not on 44. Minus four. I'm not on 44, minus four. I'm on 51, minus four. Ah, uh, okay. You've not had your bench Liveramento in yet. I've got Liveramento and the mighty Matt Lowton coming in for me. So, yeah, I, I ended up having nine players this game week if Kieran Tierney plays for Arsenal this evening. Uh, that includes, obviously, players coming off the bench. Liveramento and Lowton, as I said, I took a minus four. Um, to buy Liveramento for Luke Ayling and another uh, and Cancelo in for Luke Shaw. I don't have it in for people called Luke. It's just a funny coincidence. And obviously pleased that the two of them obviously get the clean sheets and plus Luke Shaw getting a zero. So I didn't, to be honest, I wasn't expecting the hit for Shaw to Cancelo to kind of pay off immediately. It did uh, with a kind of plus two on it. And obviously the team looks better now having Cancelo in it. No shows from Rudiger, Rafinha, Jota, and Harvey Barnes. <laughs> he's going, guys. <laughs> oh, finally. Well, he's going to have to go for me now, isn't he? Because he's lost his place in the team. Yeah, and, finally. And I, to be honest, I don't really want to sell him. But if he's not going to play, he's got to be the priority of who goes for me. That is absolute certainty. I think Harvey Barnes to Mbwemo is a transfer this week. I may even do it early to catch Mbwemo's price rise. Who's, he's been on the edge of it all week. But look at it and go, well... If I need to make another transfer, fine, I'm taking a minus four. There's, there's nothing for me to debate or wait on in terms of getting. And Buemo, who's got a free free week, no game to play. And Harvey Barnes got to go for me now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it, I get it, I get it. Uh, Salah captain like everybody else, I assume. Mm. Or the majority of everybody else. Goal, kind of a goal-packed weekend. Um, there was a few games that, that went off and we thought they would go off as well. Um, Leicester United and the Newcastle uh, Spurs game we thought would go off and Liverpool could have, should have gone off at uh, Watford. But On our pod City Friday, those those were the two games we said, didn't they? At Leicester yeah, at Newcastle, yeah, yeah, yeah. could, could really go be goals. Yeah. City uh, at Burnley didn't go off as it could have. 
um, and it has it has in what the past. What a letdown! Only two 0 Yeah, but uh, overall, I thought it was a fairly decent weekend of football. Um, there were some very good games in there. Um, I can't remember any of them. <laughs> James is, is steaming um, but we will talk through all of the games now uh, as we go into game week 9 uh, we have a Friday night deadline we do which I like um, oh, I don't well, I hate it I suppose I like the chaos that it causes in amongst like, I'm in a few leagues there's a few players that are not into plugged into FPL and uh, I know one or two are going to miss the deadline I shouldn't really be the one talking about missing deadlines you know those people who miss the deadline will beat you this week nah 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 I've got uh, two free transfers going into this week plus I'm willing to take a third uh, I take a hit for a third I've only had one hit all season which it's not a huge amount compared to some you don't have to take one no 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 (laughs) it's not in the rules I don't I don't. So the uh, the kind of thoughts now. I need to I need to weigh up Ronaldo to Lukaku has been a premeditated move that's been on the cards for ages. You mentioned it last week, and I think I'm still of the mindset that it doesn't matter if he's blanked in four. Oh, Lukaku, yeah, get him in, mate. Yeah. So look, Ronaldo to Lukaku is is fine. That makes gives me a little bit of money. Um, I could. I I want to move on Jota. I do want to move on Jota uh, sometime in the next few, and I think Sun is where I want to go. I need a bit of money for that. I've got a bit in the bank, but I won't be able to go Ronaldo to Lukaku, Jota to Sun, which means I need to find a bit more money, and this is where I need to then decide what I want to do. Potentially with Antonio, I do have two eyes on Iheanacho. I think he's now back in the team, two weeks, three returns, Leicester suddenly better. Like, come on, Brendan Rodgers. You can't be dropping this guy anymore. Stick with the two up top. And Iheanacho at 7 million. It's a bargain, I yep. think. Um, so Antonio to Iheanacho works fine. And then that get, does give me the money. So Antonio to Iheanacho, Jota to Sun, Ronaldo to Lukaku as a three-way move. Could be the direction of travel. So if you don't buy Lukaku this week, who are you going to captain? No. Nah, uh, the likelihood is I'm going to be buying. Um, if you didn't, what would you do? Would you just go it on the perma cap? Yeah, I think I'd just stick with Salah. It's the latest craze. It's only a or month. It was Rafinha, only a month ago. Yeah, but I nah. think I'd just stick with Salah. I'd so stick with Salah. Only a month ago, it was all freemium. Got to have all these free premiums. Got to have them all. Now it's oh, let's just close our eyes and captain Mo Salah every week. I get it. He's in the form of his life. Everybody keeps saying he's the best player in the world right now, and certainly on form. I think that's that's a fair argument. But we're going to captain Mo Salah away to. Manchester United who I realise look shit at the moment but they'll be up for that on Sunday don't doubt that or are we going to ignore Romelu Lukaku at home to Norwich I'm definitely captain Romelu yeah, Lukaku yeah, yeah. at the weekend as long yeah as I mean uh, in terms of my transfers they go in order of likelihood so Ronaldo to Lukaku I'd say is 99% likely and then the knock on effect on the transfers the ones that follow meh maybe so it, getting Iheanacho in is a maybe and getting Jota in, uh, moving Jota on to Sun is a maybe at the moment. Again, if I just made the one move this week, Ronaldo to Lukaku, captain Lukaku, and just kick it forward again, I can make a mini wildcard, like three transfer move with a hit next week and see what happens with uh, the injuries. I mean, so many players missing coming back from international break. I'm almost better to give it a week to let things settle down rather than uh, pile in this week, potentially. Possibly, because there's certainly a few players who played at the weekend who perhaps wouldn't have because uh, of the South American players returning. I mean, yeah. Tottenham's boys only played yesterday because the game was yesterday, Sunday, right? Sunday, and the it was a late been, kickoff as if well. If the game had been Saturday, I'm pretty sure they, they wouldn't have played on Saturday. So. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about some of these games, shall we? Let's do it, mate. Particularly uh, Mo Salah. Uh, Liverpool 5, Watford 0. I've heard that somewhere before. Mo Salah. <laughs> no, Liverpool 5, Watford 0. Yeah. It brings back memories of game week 29, the famous four goals and assists from Salah mm. in 2018, I want to say. It feels very bizarre that uh, Bobby Firmino is coming off three goals and an assist and is just not even talked about. Sc- scored, scored from a combined distance of 10 yards. Yeah, it was incredible. Or, or but... as everybody wanted to point out at the weekend, those should have been Jota's goals. Yeah, I owe Jota as well. They shouldn't have because he didn't play. <laughs> well, there's nothing to say he'd have been um, in that position. He there's nothing. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, from minute one, Liverpool were just on it. 
minute yeah, one, yeah, yeah. they were just on it. And you could tell with that level of intensity, there was no way they were going to lose. And they just, yeah, quality was so good. Um, it was the few, I mean, Salah's pass from Mane's goal oh. was the outside of his foot. But Trent had flicked one through to Salah down the channel with the outside of his foot, foot as well. And that was when I was just like, okay, these boys are, they're, they're on it today. They're, they're just feeling confident, pinging the ball around at pace, running the channel, Salah on form, done. I think done, the, done. I, think I felt for Watford. Um, and I felt, I, I did I think there was a strong... Them. Got what they deserved. I think there was a strong possibility that Danny Rose might have retired yesterday. <laughs> From football retiring during the game wasn't it <laughs> Fucking hell. um because yeah he that was a real real i feel for the guy again um because he has been a good player and a good servant but he, it's like he don't want to see him getting torn to shreds like that no um i didn't enjoy watching danny rose get completely roasted but he wasn't the only watford player getting no. roasted uh during the game um just on liverpool's intensity in the game i think there was a consciousness because what for the change manager look it could be a really fast start here go and yeah. match it and get domination of the game and I think there is a consciousness that when they haven't got Fabinho to try and insert themselves on games because if the game had got away from early like Fabinho gives them control and gives the back four real protection so they were just on it from the start mm. I think like mentality wise oh shite there goes the mic I'm so drunk, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Mentality wise, they were right on it from the start, Liverpool. Uh, before we talk about Watford, Salah, this perma cap thing, I think where we're at with this is you got to accept that if you don't captain Mo Salah, you're losing. And it means, I think, at the moment where we've got close calls, the best thing to do is put closure If you rise. don't captain Salah when he's got a good fixture or just in general. Well, no, well, I think we're in a position now, Salah's effective ownership is going to be over 100% every week going forward at the moment like even this week so if you own him and you don't captain him basically you don't want him to return yep. it's kind of where you're going to be at um, and I think there are weeks now where we can oppose and I think this coming week is one of them and there are weeks where it just kills the debate now and we go stick it on my and just twin with everyone else so I think you have to kind of choose your moments when you're going to oppose it as I've already said I think this week is, is a week to oppose it because Lukaku's got Norwich yeah. simple as that you can't win FPL with a perma captain I mean, you, you want you probably five, can. You want you want six hundred points from your captain over a season, or are you talking more? Oh, I don't, I don't know how I, many I the remember, winner got last year. It was about seven hundred, wasn't it? I yeah, think. exactly. And so, even if, if Salah would need to score three hundred and fifty points as a standard player, doubled up to get seven hundred well, captaincy points, he, he might. <laughs> which the way he's going, the way he's going, <laughs> he will. But I mean, eighty-two points after eight weeks is a joke. But we've seen and there's he's on 82 yeah. fucking hell <laughs> it's unbelievable yeah. um, it might even be 84 with his two BPS um, people you, you score more points than if you double the points of the highest scoring FPL player people get more points than that from their captain which is why perma captain doesn't mathematically make sense so um, yeah he's on 83 James. I get it though there are definitely people who are just going to captain Mo Salah every week now until something really changes and, and I get that you also can't perma-captain him completely because he'll be going to the AFCON in January so Correct. that's a couple of weeks <clears throat> unless you just leave your team dead and have a good vice-captain yeah Trent was looking sexy as well uh, miss him do you know what is an interesting one I think it was um, I want to say Flapjack from Surgery I think tweeted it uh, I might have that completely wrong because um, I'm as drunk as he normally is at the moment but I'm sure he tweeted and said Owners will be happy with the six points and non-owners are happy with the six points. Yeah. It did feel like that. Um, no, I didn't I didn't struggle too much knowing that I was without him. I, I come to the decision and accepted it. I would obviously, like everybody else, I'd rather he was in my team at the moment, but he's not. They've got a few difficult fixtures coming up. Like you can say whatever you want about Manchester United at the moment. I remember two years ago, they went there at Old Trafford and United were on a bad run they had loads of injuries United and Liverpool had won every single game up to that point and with Lallana equalised with about 10 minutes to go United did them over on the counter attack could have easily won the game and actually the fixture might well suit United at the weekend to actually drop off completely and accept that perhaps they're not going to have domination of the game so United will be well up for Sunday don't doubt that A Watford sleepwalking into uh, the bottom three here has Ranieri been sacked yet? nah would it surprise you? <laughs> it would after one game. 
it would after one game against Liverpool in that form. I think that was that's like walking into a baptism of fire if ever there is one. But they were not good and they offered very I mean, Ishmael Lassar head and shoulders their best player, but he's their only good player. Have you got the sofa score app on now? Uh, I've got it on here. Yeah. Okay. What, what have, would have you like look. me to with his two players and I, 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 I want to just check the numbers of their passes because I have seen but I can't remember exactly how many it is but Kiko Femini and Adam Messina at wing packs I mean yeah you can highlight Danny Rose and how bad he and the rest of the Watford team were but the amount of passes they completed at wing back is astonishing Kiko Femini accurate passes four <laughs> how many minutes played uh, that's a good question. It's he about, played. I think he 56. played fifty-six. And Messi- Adam Messina played forty-five. Yeah, he and how many did at half time. And how many did he complete? Accurate passes. Yeah, he beat his mate. He got five. Brilliant. So I mean, Kiko Feminier in fifty-six minutes completed four passes as a wing back. I don't, I don't even know how that's possible. No. As a wing back, you think how much in a modern game, yeah, yeah. full backs and wing backs have the ball. Yeah, you're kind of a reference point. Yeah. Okay, attack stopped, go backwards. Yeah. Where, where were they? I remember looking at West Ham stats in the first 20 minutes yesterday because of how dominant we were. We completed about 350 or something in the first 20, 25 minutes. 350 passes accurate. This is five in 20 before. minutes. Yeah, that can't be right. It was. It was definitely three times what Everton. Oh, either way, it was in the hundreds. These guys have done five and four <laughs> between them, bro. Oh, it was... It, I, I sort of remember the stat. It was final third completed passes. That I was well in excess for that for us, for them. But but either way, Feminia and, uh, and what's his face, that's not good. No. No. So they obviously changed system now. There's no knowing if this will stick. I think the only thing you probably care about from FPL perspective is Ben Foster played again in goal. No one's suggesting go and buy, but that's handy. It doesn't mean it won't change, but Ranieri's gone with him in the first instance. And the other thing you're obviously going to care about is Ishmael Saar, who obviously played through the middle. Um, and it's worth watching and worth keeping an eye on because that makes him more interesting. He had what Watford's one real effort in the game. Uh, and I think if you've got, you hold. Was it Everton away, Southampton at home there next to, I want to say, Watford? So... Although they're on this really long run, the next two are, are okay and I'd hold. But you, you ain't going to buy in that now. That's what I said last bit about Saar. It's, it's gone. Yeah. But I, you keep at the moment, I think. Mm. Uh, let's talk about the Aston Villa Wolves game. 2 nil up, 3 2 down. I love seeing all these tweets on my timeline. I'm like, the atmosphere at Villa Park is roaring. <laughs> it's not by the end, though, is it? Mm. How did Villa contrive to, to lose this one? They made um, a number of substitutions, which I think were understandable. Like they took Douglas Luiz off, who had obviously participated for Brazil. Yeah. Uh, Emi Buendia has been coming back from an injury. They took him off. They played a little bit differently with Buendia playing in the free and basically ahead of McGinn and Luiz. Um, I, I just I can't even explain how the game got away from them. They were in control basically. The ring control, let balls come into the box and shit happens. I mean, even Cody's equalising goal is so remarkable because Kilman has the first header that hits the bar. They keep it alive. They get runners around the back post. It ends up going in off Cody's knackers or something, I think. Uh, crawls over the line. Roman Saish tries to put it in on the line, but it's already over the line. He's probably off sides. It doesn't matter. It was just a car crash. Yeah. And obviously the final goal from Neves. It takes a massive deflection. Shit can happen. Um. I heard, and I didn't watch this game, I heard Axel Twanzavi struggled at centre-back. If any Villa fans can confirm that, I'd appreciate it. I've seen a few saying that they think Hawes would come back in, but I'd be very surprised about that, personally. I think Danny, o- Danny Ings and Watkins remain live and interesting FPL assets. I don't think ahead of Arsenal away you're going to go and buy that, but they remain interesting. For Wolves, Huang obviously played right up top with Raul Jimenez only a substitute. Another one who kind of no-showed this weekend, but you're probably grateful for the one point if you do own him. Um, he underwhelmed, I would say. And again, they kind of changed a little bit with Dendonka playing more of an advanced role. That's not going to stick, so don't get excited about that. Wolves, are in, again, they're another side are in the middle of this really good run. I think, again, if you're on, you're on. It's no buy. There's no there's no interest for me in Wolves players at the moment. I look at uh, they've won four of the last five in the league, which is decent, right? They've got they've gone from losing their first three to at least getting to mid table now, um, and they're only two points behind us and three points behind you, uh, touching distance really. So 
Credit to them for turning it around. But I look at it and Teams I Teams are below Tottenham in the league. What's yeah. going on here then? There are, they've only scored eight goals in eight games. So they've not been prolific. So the ones they've been winning... To be fair, scored three in ten minutes at the weekend. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's a fair point, right? So they've only scored five goals in the other seven games this season. They're just not scoring enough goals for me to want to uh, pay attention to Wolves yet. But it's nice to see that uh, they've turned it around. And I think I actually like Bruno Lage. I From the interviews that I've seen more recently of him and stuff, I think he's 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 got something about him uh, and a philosophy. And I think he's got a bit of charisma about him as well, a la Klopp's and Guardiola's of the world. So I'm interested to see how he, he progresses. There was a point earlier in the season, I did think Wolves, are they just going to be, be flat this year and crap? But they've... They've, picked they've up done it right. Points. And and we said after those first few games, look, they'll they'll get themselves in and around kind of where they now top half must be. They're tenth. Yeah. Um twelve points. And I think that's probably where they're gonna finish is somewhere between there and thirteenth or so in, in all likelihood. Remember how unlucky they were in their first few games, right? Mm. It was like no goals with like an XG of like four or five from those first three or something. So that they've got a little bit of the rubber to green gone their way this time. It's probably something that they were rode in the bank, I think. It's okay. Leeds, Everton, Palace, West Ham, Norwich, Burnley. Again, I have no interest in their assets, but I don't think you're going anywhere if you if um, if you do own the likes of Jimenez and stuff. Mm. Probably, the, probably more the problem one if you're sitting there with people like Traore. It's like every week, what do you do? What do you do? Be handy. Move it on. If, why doesn't he walk around goalkeepers? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Uh, Leicester 4, Manchester United 2. Ole out. Uh, well, I tweeted after the game, is it trending yet? And yep, yeah, sure enough, it, I think it was trending mm. by about 4.30, I think, um, from the moment that the second goal or so went in. Um, defensively, I mean, came back to, to bite them again, despite the fact Matic Maguire, played. And Maguire played. And we didn't expect Harry Maguire well, to start. I, I, Solskjaer's interview afterwards was a little bit weird, what he was saying mm. about Harry Maguire. was saying, like, oh, if he wasn't ready, it's my fault and stuff. So was he ready or wasn't well, he ready? Well, yeah, you, you make your decisions. And I didn't see anything. From, and I watched all of this game back on Saturday night. There wasn't anything from the game that made me think, oh, Harry Maguire's injured. No. To, in all fairness. No. no. Um, but it did also feel like because of Varane's injury, it had become very rushed a necessity to play him. But I don't think it was particularly helpful considering the players they were up against, the likes mm. of Vardy and Ian Atchu, who want to press, want to get into the, the channels and stuff. very good. Actually, it's the sort of thing that Eric Bailly, if I, I'm sure Bailly was an unused sub, that actually would probably deal with a little bit better than Maguire. Mm. Um, so it seemed a surprise to me that they rushed him into the team. They can't get the balance of the midfield right. Um, they did a video we spoke about last week for the advanced tiers a couple of weeks ago on how they're getting done over on the counter attack. Yeah, and basically as kind of proven by the Jamie Vardy goal, the third goal. Actually, the deep, the deeper the attack start from, the more trouble they're in because you just bypass that midfield and you're in at the back four yep. and in trouble. I thought Matic playing would solve that a little bit, but apparently not. I, no. I, I didn't think he played particularly well. I think McTominay has to be in there for his energy. Personally, whether, I agree. People, whether people think he's a good player and or a bad I'm player. I'm with you. I think Matic and McTominay are, are the two best to have in there. Well, I, Depending I, on the games, um, Fred sometimes for Matic can do a job as well if you want I a bit more energy. I think that's what he's going to do. Yeah, difficult. Um, and you look I, at the two goals United scored. Mason Greenwood's class, class, class finish. Um, and Rashford's a long ball from Lindelof. <laughs> like, they're not... Um, uh, they, they didn't, weren't consistently applying pressure and building pressure and you think it's 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 going to come and they've conceded four at the other end I mean it shows as well Leicester not great defensively either, although they're definitely going to be better off for having Johnny Evans back and importantly obviously they've changed system yes. and actually listening to particularly Kasper Schmeichel's interview afterwards was quite telling I thought when he said look we've changed system we're better like this mm. <laughs> okay um, I mean he's obviously an experienced head in that dressing room he's been there through the title team and stuff so I mean he's basically just come out and said yeah we're better with a back three that's what we're going to do now which is why I don't need to think about selling Harvey Barnes now he's got to go Yeah. Um, unless he's going to play at 10 behind Ian Acho and, and Vardy and I'd be quite surprised if that happened at the moment so I think you're right to be talking up Ian Acho as an interesting asset now I think it's time for me to go to, go to him he's, he's served us so well in the past a lot of people are, are looking at Vardy as an alternative to Lukaku and Ronaldo I think just go straight to Ian Acho like the, the money the, if they freed up the money 
to bring in Sun, for example, and we'll talk about Spurs when we get to them. I feel like I don't feel like I want to take uh, by Kane because I don't want Kane over Lukaku for the next few fixtures. But I do want Son over most other midfielders, bar probably Salah. There's no one else near Son's value doing anything. No, exactly. So, so I, it's either, do you want to play at that value or do yeah. you skip it? Son is Son is a yes no, whereas Kane is an A or B choice. Son is a do you want Son? You got to figure out where to get him. Kane is a Kane versus Lukaku. A Kane great. versus Ronaldo. So I think that's why I'm moving more towards Son. I do need money. I haven't done the best job this season of looking after team value, so I do need to make sure that I can find the money. And at the moment, based on current performances, I'd rather sacrifice Antonio than Ivan Tony. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, Iheanacho is coming at you. United assets, uh, it's been time. If you weren't already doing it, like Luke Shaw can go, clearly. Um, After that game, I did take a certain satisfaction from seeing no one in my team other than Ronaldo and knowing that Ronaldo's leaving now because I just don't, don't feel it. I, I think, honestly, I, for me, if you've got Ronaldo, I think the move to Lukaku is so straightforward this week. And I understand people were probably thinking of doing it earlier and held on, and I can understand why. I think, honestly, look, United are playing arguably the best team in the league and Chelsea are playing arguably the weakest team in the league. There's not really anything to think about as far as I'm concerned. Agreed. That transfer gets done. Um, Greenwood uh, will be still owned by some. Uh, I don't suppose he was probably in many teams that have wild carded. I still own. And I'm concerned about it, despite obviously the brilliant goal at the weekend, because exactly what we said, I think you're probably looking at McTominay and Matic or McTominay and Fred being the starting midfield going forward. Pogba's still going to play, in my opinion. So is obviously Bruno, so is Ronaldo. So there's only one spot available for all the rest of those attacking players. And I think at the moment, Greenwood's probably got the the nod in terms of favouritism because he's the best balanced. If you're going to put Pogba into that three behind the front man, Pogba's either central or left. Greenwood is the most comfortable playing on the right. I know obviously Rashford can play there and stuff. Marcus Rashford's obviously not going to be out of that team for long. So it's going to become a problem. Uh, I'm looking to sell him yep. soon. Yep. And I think any other United players get rid. And let's talk about Manchester United again in game week 14, 15. Yep. Man City 2, Burnley 0. Burnley will feel like they came away from this with a 3-0 victory. Great they? success. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, r- routine enough. They scored early with Bernardo Silva, did City, and then it's kind of just get the job done. Kind of uh, simple and straightforward. Disappointing for a lot of people that were on Diaz. I pulled up the Man City lineup to see uh, Stones and Laporte in the board. First, my first issue was that there was no Cancelo at left back. Until I glanced across to him and saw, oh shit, it's all right. He's playing a right back instead because that was my first instinct. That's my only defensive coverage. The second instinct was, oh, no Ruben Diaz. And that was a kick in the sky bollocks more than it was an FPL kick in the balls. But um, surprising to see. I'd, I'd had a tip off during my stream that Cancelo was starting. Yep. Um, I also had a tip off that John Stones was starting, but didn't see that message. <laughs> so I wasn't able to help anyone, but it was there. And it was further up in the messages. Um, stuff got posted on our Patreon Slack. So I was quite comfortable with Cancelo. Um, and obviously when Rockstar confirms it before, obviously Twitter goes into to meltdown. Yeah. What do you mean Diaz? And I love the fact Rockstar was tweeting as he does. Oh, certain players need a rest. But then with City, you still don't know who that means who's coming in, no, right? No, no, no. Um, the attacking team that they picked was the six that we'd kind of expected, actually, having spoke to, obviously, Johnny Pringle on, on COTC yeah, last week. we knew week. Torres was out, right? And Jesus wasn't going to play. Exactly so Mares that. for Jesus becomes quite straightforward as a as a swap. Um, Sterling playing. And so, yeah. I, I think Sterling is going to play the majority of the, the games at centre-forward coming up. I think that's what's going to happen in the near future. Uh, I think for some of the harder games, that may change. Um, and I think you're going to see a bit of rotation all the way through. Johnny did say on COTC last week, he said, I think Grealish is probably in line for a few rests. Absolutely spot on. So it doesn't mean Phil Foden definitely keeps his place. Uh, obviously, it was his shot that was saved when Bernardo scored. I think it's fair to assume Jesus probably comes back in for Mares, or I think was right up there as kind of best one-week punts this week. Obviously, it hasn't worked out. Bernardo Silva is playing extremely well at the moment. And you've got KDB back fit. Except that with these attacking City players, there is going to be rotation. Mm. 
and it's not just the attacking players as we've seen at the weekend with Diaz and, and Walker getting breaks. Perhaps not Brighton this coming weekend, but the following week it's Palace at home. And then again, what's what's he going to do? I mean, I would think for that game that he would probably think, oh, I want Carl Walker's pace back in that team against Crystal Palace. And I mean, Walker's first choice anyway. But then you would think for Palace at home, does that put real doubt on Cancelo? Is it a sort of game we think, oh, get Zinchenko in for this one maybe? I don't know. I mean, Can- Cancelo is, is such a great asset to own though. I would pay the extra for him over the other guys. Yeah, He's got a mega haul in him. And we said this a lot last week and every week it was like, he's coming and eventually it did. Yeah. You know, West Brom away had like an 18 pointer or something. I owned him so much last remember. season and it always it was a gift that keeps giving like he's like a comfort blanket having him in your team um, and I and I, I'm with you I really do think that the haul is going to come um, the other player that's a, a comfort blanket and the only City attacking player that I want uh, is Kevin De Bruyne just because of his explosiveness <laughs> and all round game and he's probably the least likely to get rotated because of his importance and he's captain and all that kind of stuff is he captain now? I think Kevin De Bruyne's captain. Got to be questioning that. I guess Fernandinho is when he plays, but it's yeah, not often yeah. now. Yeah, I think when he's when he's on the pitch, KDB's wearing the armband more often than not now. Um, I don't know how I can afford it, unless I don't have a premium striker. Well, it's it's justifying it, right? So I look through and go. If you look at game week ten now, Liverpool play Brighton at home. This is what I'm talking about. Oh. Kevin De Bruyne versus Palace or Mo Salah against Brighton or Lukaku at Newcastle. This is a closer one where I think that one is, as it stands, you just go, put it on Mo. Yeah. Forget about it. And therefore, I can't see me looking at De Bruyne as a captaincy option to a roundabouts game week 15. And that's when obviously Manchester United's fixtures swing back again and we're all going to be looking at buying Ronaldo back and stuff like that. So I never see where... I'd, as much as you'd want him in your team, I never see at the moment where that's justifiable from an expense. Mm, yeah. He's never getting same, the armband same, at the moment. Problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brighton nil. Well, it's Norwich nil. Brighton nil. Norwich two draws on the bounce, James. So they're out of their rut completely. Whereas Brighton two draws on the bounce as well. Just one brief note on Burnley. I don't suppose anybody particularly uh, gives yeah. a shit. Uh, but Maxwell Corne basically played OOP. Uh, at the weekend which Left meant winger no up top right off up of top. Chris Wood yeah um, which meant Dwight McNeil I'm stayed sure he was bought on the as left. A left back he's a left midfielder really left midfielder um, and he had the one on one chance and I promise you during that moment Johnny Pringle was shitting himself because he scores against City every time he plays them in the Champions League basically <laughs> I don't suppose we're playing against City in the Champions League anytime soon while he's at Burnley um, but I don't think that will stick I think we are looking at something in the near future where Dwight McNeil is going to go and play on the right hand side and yeah. he is one to watch. Brighton, yes. Norwich, sorry, Sish. It was nil-nil. Yes, it was. Uh, I, um, I'm taking my all, Sanchez all for points to the bank. Josh, Josh Sargent, good morning, sir. How are you, Sergeant? Uh, definitely wasn't Sergeant Major, judging by some of them no. finishes, mate. Um, what was he doing when when the chance pre- presented it to him? He fluffed it, didn't he? It he, needed like, like more, he needed to put more... He needed to put more power into it. Um, and probably a bit of stage would fright. even have reached the goal? Nah. And I love Duffy panicked. <laughs> he didn't need to. Duffy nah, could have sat on the ball. Take your time and, uh, and clear it. Uh, I've had uh, four clean sheets in eight from Sanchez now, which I don't think is too bad uh, for a 4.5 goalkeeper. 50% clean sheet rate. What are your thoughts on that? I think they're one of the best defensive sides in the, in the league. We actually kind of spoke about them a bit on Sky last week on the Sky podcast on Wednesday saying look beyond the top tier you kind of Brighton Leeds might be the, the two teams for different reasons in that format why you'd look at them mm. Brighton's so consistent yeah. so consistent they have however got Manchester City this weekend and Liverpool away the weekend after right yeah. so maybe I'll play Ben Foster he's got difficult fixtures as well Everton and Southampton can I be honest with you I would play Sanchez I think yeah Cause just because Watford are shite yeah I agree with you. Honestly. And Backman could just as easily come in. So I will be playing Sanchez, but uh, it's not a thought that, that didn't pass my mind. If one side is going to keep up the likes of Liverpool, Man City, outside the, the top tier teams, it's them. Yeah. They're, they're four form merit at the moment, but yeah. have been helped a little bit by the fixture run, right? They haven't played Chelsea yet. Uh, I want to say they haven't played Manchester United yet. Mm. They haven't played Tottenham yet. I yes, West them. Ham yet. They haven't played West Ham yet. <laughs> they're them. Um, I've played Norwich and failed to win. Yeah. Um, it looks like it Away, was... Away, but still. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it was a fair result. I, th- I think now, though, Norwich are... 
we spoke about this with FPL Badger a few weeks ago, our Norwich correspondent, and said like you're in real danger of falling into that line where teams, irrespective playing, you think have to win. They're on the borderline of that now. Now Brighton drawing at Norwich is is not a disaster. Of course it's not. Um, I think defensively, if you own, now is a good time to think about what you're doing. So if you own Shane Duffy, like you don't need to do anything yet, particularly if you built up the value in him. I think he, he goes on the bench next couple of games, doesn't he? And pr- so does probably most of your Brighton defensive assets, bar Sanchez. But I don't think you play Duffy against Man City or Liverpool, personally. So there's a couple of weeks to assess. Tarek Lamptey played the last half hour. And I think we should strongly keep an eye on it. What price is young Tarek? So Tarek I want to say he's like 4.3 or 4.4. He's going to be cheaper it's than 4.5. I can give you that much it's information. I'll pull it up while... Uh... Definitely worth keeping an eye on the next couple of weeks because he's an absolute flyer, isn't he? Mm. Um, and their fixture run, once they get to the end of these two games, is not bad. I mean, for example, um, Newcastle at home and Leeds at home would be their two home games after that. Looking a little bit further ahead, we've got Tottenham at home. That's a free pointer, isn't it? Wolves at home, Brentford at home. They're their home games uh, basically up till Christmas. So There's not a bad little stretch there, actually, yeah. where we can consider these players. You've got Tarek Lamptey's price yet, I mate? have, and he hasn't dropped much, James. Only 4.4. I guess because he got injured pre-season. Um, he has been flagged for a lot and stuff, he, yeah. he, People wouldn't have started with him, so his no, 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 ownership would have been particularly low, so he wouldn't have dropped a lot. Definitely one to keep an eye on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Southampton won Leeds nil. I know Leeds had the issues. Rafinha didn't get any minutes in the end and what have you. Um, but for all intents and purposes, what I heard about the game and I only caught highlights was that Southampton were good. Um, and particularly Armando Broja, Broja was also good. And it reminded me of the, the 15, 20 minutes he played against us earlier in the season. Mm. When he came on, he was a live wire. Um, he, he played 16 minutes. but He looked really good. And um, so I'm not surprised that uh, A, he got the nod ahead of Adam Armstrong and B, that he scored because he is a good talent that Chelsea have there. Some players sometimes have a way of forcing their way into starting 11s just by being better than the others. Do you think there's any chance that this could happen with uh, Armando? I think so, yes. I think it's possible. I I think what we're looking at with Southampton, obviously they're in the middle of this great run of fixtures, is, (coughs) excuse me, Rotation, unfortunately, the word that you don't want to hear because there's no way that Adams, when back fit, and Adam Armstrong are not going to be getting minutes at some point. It's also worth saying that Bro has limped off at the end yeah, of the game as yeah, well. Yeah. So I, I don't know the status of that, but that's worth keeping an eye on. So I don't think he's not one for the early transfer brigade, for example. Um, I think he would fall into this really awkward line if you owned him where you'd be like, well, I've got to start him. And there might be a lot of one pointers in there. But obviously, if it comes good, and you can work him in. Like, if he becomes a regular, he's going in everybody's team. For sure. At that price. And that quality, yeah. Because really, if he's playing, his value should be six, six and a half. So just on that perspective, yeah. he's playing every week. And with the fixtures they've got, you'd put him in. I'd need to see a lot more personally. Nathan Redmond's basically playing as one of the the, the furthest forward at the moment as well. Uh, they got over the absence of James Ward-Prowse. And I will tell you, so the very best statistic I saw from the weekend was that Southampton on Saturday were the first team to outrun Marcelo Bielsa's Leeds United since they were promoted to the Premier League, except for in games where Leeds have had a player sent off. Wow. That's a work rate for you. And Hassan Hutt always has been renowned for the work rate that the team put in. If you outrun Leeds and you win, you've deserved it. Yes. If there was, if there was a team, I think you'd say, right, someone's going to outrun Leeds. They're the sort of ones you'd have put near the top thinking it could be them. Intensity-wise, for sure, it, yeah. It could be them. And they were so bang on it. Um, statistics from the weekend of that game do not look like a Leeds United game. Like Southampton should have won by more. And wh- wh- why do we think that is? Is it because Le- if the players' leads are missing or do you think it's just the case of Southampton approached it right tactically and off we go? That team that Leeds played at the weekend, if that was their team every week for the rest of the season, they would struggle to stay up. mm I don't mean that horribly. We've spoken about this before. The squad is really, really small. If you start taking out key components of that team, they're going to be in trouble. So look, Aileen is obviously a big miss. Rafinha was a big miss. The biggest miss for them, the one they absolutely cannot do without, is Calvin Phillips. I think their win ratio with and without him goes from like 45% to 20% or something. Wow. There's a major drop-off. Um, they haven't got anyone that can replicate what Calvin Phillips does. He's a top, he's a top midfield player. Of course. So you take Aylin and his experience out of that team. Rafinha, 
and Calvin Phillips, and suddenly it's a bit all. And obviously they're missing the centre forward Bamford as yeah. well. So I mean that's four big players, and everyone's going to have injuries at certain points. It just for Leeds it looks so damaging when big mm. players don't play. Yeah, because the squad depth is not good enough, frankly. The likes of Tyler Roberts, Daniel James. I mean, Click's a decent player. Strike. These players aren't. Are they Premier League standard? It's borderline. Bo- bottom half. It's Premier borderline, League isn't it? Bottom half Premier League standard. But the other players that you mentioned that are not playing, Bamford, Aiding, Phillips, um, and so on, can are. You, can you get the stats up from that game? Yeah. I in terms of shots and stuff. Yes. Because they were so dominant. But of course, Leeds, like Southampton, also have good fixtures. Wolves at home, Norwich away, the next two. If you're on Rafinha, you're in a good position. If you're not on Rafinha, despite everything I'm saying, you should still buy Rafinha. <laughs> Honestly, priority for me would be to have him in the team. And I think those who wildcarded with him in their team, those who wildcarded, and it seemed like a lot of people were wildcarding this week. If you've got Rafinha in, you're going to be happy, despite the no-show at the weekend, ready to go for what's to come. Yeah, the, the next two are decent, Wolves, Norwich. I think the three after that, Leicester, Tottenham, Brighton, are difficult um, so if someone was to hop off him for three weeks then I wouldn't actually be against it but then you've got Palace and Brentford for me he's a hold until at least game week 15 Rafinha um, but if I need do you know anyone who's going to wild card in game week 16 yeah you yeah cheers yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's a hold until 15 but see it, yeah you still want to see a bit more from Leeds than, than we've seen so I, far I can't see me looking at any Leeds assets other than the man Rafinha. himself at, at the moment personally I mean, um, they look, they're one point, uh, one point, uh, sorry, three points, but one place off the relegation zone at the moment. Yeah, well, they're on, it's the opposite of Brian. Le- Leeds are where they deserve to be at the moment. Mm. You got, have you got them stats for the game? Yeah, Leeds did dominate possession 55% to 45%. This is normal. 19 shots to three. Every stat I give you will be Southampton first. 19 shots to three. Five on tar- target versus zero on target. 12 off target versus two off target. Eight corners to Leeds is one. Two big chances Leeds did have one. Um, they didn't outpass Leeds, but obviously if Leeds most had te- most, more Most teams won't. Uh, but they had more dribbles than Leeds. Um, and yeah, they, they generally dominated all of the attacking stats. So I said, the numbers didn't like replicate what you expect to see from a Leeds game. I mean, just Leeds, zero shots on target. It's just outright surprising in any game, actually. Mm. Um, Livramento owners... Thumbs up. You all got him off the bench again this week. And I'm with, what I, he's there I'm, for. I'm with you with the jam this week. But interestingly, what do we do now? Burnley home this weekend. Starts, doesn't it? Depends, obviously, what the rest of your team looks like. like yeah. But I think most people starts. And that's why, as well, I'm a Rudiger owner. And I'm certainly, you know, my priorities elsewhere. I think even if Rudiger's out this week, I think it's, he, he still sticks there for me. Exactly. I yeah. think so. Brentford nil, Chelsea won for not. Uh, not for want of trying from Brentford's point of view. Um, I loved the last 20 minutes. It was so good. Brentford, from what I've seen, uh, put in... They play differently against the big teams, which is... So what you see of Brentford, compared to what I saw live in the stadium against West Ham, was completely different to the Liverpool... Are you saying you're not a big team? No, I'm saying live versus when you go up against top four. Yeah, for sure. Because they would have come to our place thinking if we come, get something out of this game, it would be good. But against Chelsea and Liverpool, it's just a free hit. So they have approached both of those games, which I watched on telly, very differently to our game. Slowed our game down, niggly fouls, you know, all that shit that we moaned about. Play acting. They didn't against... Like, they just go for it. And the same against Liverpool, which they turned into a draw. It's just weird that the two sides of it, but I suppose sometimes when you're going up against the big boys, just fucking go for it. And Buemo six times hit the post. I knew he was going to bring unbelievable, that up. unbelievable. And nobody else is more than one, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. And, he's going in, mate. Um, yeah. I think yeah, he's time to uh, get him in. The only reason that I haven't really strongly thought about Jota to and Buemo to free up some money is because I've already got Tony. I get that. I'm kind of like in this, do I want to double up? If you offered me Tony or Mbwemo right now, I'd actually take Mbwemo. Mbwemo. I think there's a big debate about how to pronounce his name. We'll call him Mbwemo. I now. don't actually know. I don't think anyone knows. Mbwemo. Anyway. Uh, I've been calling him Mbwemo for the last two years. Yeah, so I found I'm going to stick with that. Um, I'd rather have Mbwemo than Tony, but I own Tony right now. So why am I going to use a transfer to make that move? 
So I'm I'm almost certainly buying a Buemo this week. I, I like I said, I might even do it tonight. Um, Tony, I'm beginning to look at game week 11 is the move for me. Um, and the reason 11 is because I'm now thinking, yeah, in for Antonio. And I think Antonio versus Tottenham Villa, I'm still quite happy with that. Then, then it's a good time for the swap. And I think a lot will look at this. Antonio's got Liverpool. Tony's got Norwich. Yep. I can see a lot of people looking at that. And I think that, that's the move I've got in my mind is to, is to do that in 11. Obviously, if something happens to Antonio in midweek or something, pff, I think it's just happening early for me. Mm. So it probably means in my shape now, I'm probably just staying with two up front. Okay. Uh, which means one at kind of Tony at Antonio's value, one at the, the premium value, which means probably Zakiri sits for me. And I still kind of stay with... Uh, a midfield four slash midfield five it probably just works easier for me now to look at moving on Antonio because for me wild carding in 16 as well Antonio's going to have Liverpool Wolves away Man City Brighton Chelsea I mean not a good five fixtures and we've discussed so many times that he will score in these games by the way he's not going to he's not going to go big in these games I don't think is he one thing I'm massively surprised about with Antonio uh, is his ownership still at 45.9%. It's massive. It's absolutely massive. Uh, considering he has, he's only returned once in like five games or but something. But then we sit here every week and go, I mean, we've gone way off topic here, but we talk about like keeping him. Yeah. We're not saying sell Antonio. I'm saying I'm looking at it now in 11 and going, mm. yeah, I can see the swap. And I think some will begin to do it now because a few people will look at Tottenham and go, well, that's a difficult game at the weekend and Antonio is going to fucking destroy us on Sunday. Um Brentford I loved the last 20 minutes I think it was the 20 minutes and it's really strange to say this because a lot of it was long throws um, keeping the ball in and around the box I found that 20 minutes of football more in- enjoyable than anything else I'd watched this season actually because it was intense I got drawn into the emotion of the game yeah. now people know me I'm not a, I don't particularly like Chelsea but I also don't particularly care but I was drawn in I think a lot of people were of wanting Brentford to score he yeah, was just kept coming and Mendy saved their fucking ass, man. Mm. Big time. On Chelsea. There was a there was a few question marks about him when he came in. Is he is he good enough? I wasn't convinced at now. first, but yeah, yeah. A lot of people weren't, but I thought, look, you got give the guy a chance. And he, he did keep a lot of clean sheets, but I don't know if that was as much because Chelsea were decent with Tuchel than him. But he's fine now. As a premium goalkeeper. Um, he's what similar price to your Allison and your Edison and whatever. He's just as likely to keep you clean sheets. I think the back three for seventy minutes, Saar, Christensen, and Shalaba did really well, and I buckled at the end. But fair game to them; they survived and got through the game. Chilwell, if you're on, great. A lot of people are going to buy him this week. I think mm. is it back to back games he's scored in Norwich at home to come. I can see the appeal. I don't think it's of interest to me. Just as easily could be Marcus Alonso this week. Is Rhys James going to play? I don't know. This, this this drama every week. If you're prepared to put yourself in that position and say, okay, I'm going to have these players. I know every week this could happen. They'll either play or they won't play. Fine. What I would say of Chilwell is he's first choice. I've always thought that. I always thought that he would get back in the team for Alonso at some stage. I think it was probably off-field stuff that we're not aware of. Definitely first choice. Does he play against Norwich? I have no idea. It's not one... I, I don't think I'd be taking a minus four for it if like really gets definitely out. I can't see me doing it. No. Um, some, they're, they're, they're not quite firing at the moment. Still running out. And for me, a lot of that's on the shape. So they, they changed during the game against Tottenham in game week five to this three in midfield and went two up front. And it was very successful in terms of uh, two calls, spotting the problem, fixing it, and they ran away with that game. They then played the same system against Manchester City. Obviously, it didn't go so well. I assumed by this point they would have gone back to having two people behind Lukaku, but at the moment it's stuck. And I think that's a, a, one reason why a lot of people seem to gambled on Timo Werner at the weekend. No interest to myself, Timo Werner, personally. And I think eventually, and it doesn't mean Werner won't play against Norwich, we will get back to... Lukaku having sort of Havertz and Mount or Pulisic or hudson Adoy, two kind of attacking deeper players rather than an actual partner. I don't think Werner's good for Lukaku. Bottom line. It's yeah. not, not going to stop me captaining Lukaku against Norwich. Because you, play, they might change the system. Well, it's just the opponent. You just target the opponent. Yeah. But I, I don't think Werner's good for him. I think Werner 
makes some great runs. One of his strengths is his movement. But I think he makes a lot of runs that Lukaku wants to make. Yeah, suffocates his space And it draws, Lukaku therefore gets drawn towards the ball. Because obviously, with Lukaku, you can play either way with him. You can go over the top, in behind, or you can play it into his body because he's got the strength and stuff. With Werner, back to goal, not so great. So I think he's, he's the one that's going beyond. And I think it's restricting Lukaku a little mm. bit. Listen, Lukaku could play at 10 against Norwich and still might get a hat-trick. So I'm not concerned from that perspective, personally. But I think they'll be better off getting like Mount and Havertz back in the team. It felt like, when I looked at the team, it felt a little bit like a Carabao Cup team. Okay. There's a lot of players missing. Obviously, the, the whole back three. I would say um, Azpilicueta, uh, right-sided centre-back. Um, Silva and Rudiger is probably Chelsea's strongest three. Obviously, Azpilicueta played wing back. You got no Jorginho in that team. There's no Mount, no Havertz. Pulisic still out. They got through it. It's what big teams do, right? It's win games like that. But they were lucky. I want to buy another Chelsea defender. Go on in. Don't let me stop you. Norwich, Newcastle, Burnley. Yeah. Uh, what odds would you get on three clean sheets? Uh, have you literally row? only just realised that fixture schedule? <laughs> no, but I'm just thinking about what to do with my. Um, it's actually not about the fixture schedule. I'm thinking I've got my two free transfers this week. I could kick one forward, kick one forward. But I'm like, just get the Chelsea defender in for the next three and then figure out what you're going to do afterwards in terms of wild card or in a few weeks from now or whatever. But I'm just like, is it. I never really think short term. Without knowing what the next, well, I do sometimes think without knowing what the next move is. But I'm just looking at it thinking I'm dumb not to get. I don't think Chelsea. you ever met a transfer and think nah. of the next move. <laughs> I just think I'm dumb not to get another Chelsea defender with that run. So obviously, if Rudiger's out, yeah, there's a decision to make because I've, I'm going to obviously have none and just have Lukaku. Um, you certainly think the Norwich and Burnley home games look like clean sheets, yeah. definitely, don't they? Yeah. But you might get one in, might not even play. Mm. Um, I feel like you've we've missed the. The start of it was was going for Southampton when obviously they didn't keep a clean sheet and actually a lot of people have assets who obviously didn't play yep. this weekend. I mean, basically, the, at the weekend, it's only Ben Chilwell mm-hmm. and Azpilicueta. That's it. Yep. There's not many people got Christensen. If they have, well done. There's another 6.9. I'll take it Christensen didn't get any bonus. No, he, he tends didn't. not to. Who got the bonus for Chelsea? Just that well, interest? Chilwell, of course. Yeah. Uh, Saar. Yep. And Mendy. Yeah, of course, Mendy was going to get mm, bonus. Yeah. He picked up six saves. Um, beyond those three fixtures that you speak of, though, I mean, it's tougher. I, I, I think you can leave a defensive one there all season, like a Rudiger, and just crack on with it. But the offensive players, no interest. No. no. Uh, let's talk about the Sunday fixtures where both our clubs played and both our clubs went away from home and brought home the bacon. And deservedly so. Everton nil, West Ham won. Um, yeah, I I missed the first two minutes. I had a, a, a somewhere to be, and I rushed home. Missed the first two minutes, thinking, "What? Well, there's going to be a goal," and then just watched the first uh, fifteen minutes, thinking, "This is bizarre." That we hadn't started games with that level of intensity for a while. That first twenty minutes against Brentford could not have been more different than this twenty minutes against Everton. Um, we talked about Leeds struggling when they miss a handful of key players. Everton are missing fewer first team players but it's almost affecting them more like Rondon and Iwobi versus Richarlison and Calvert-Lewin Iwobi if we had if we if we played them again and they had Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison different game completely different game like the difference would be huge and so I, I, I struggle I wonder with their strength and depth could be a real problem we, we dominated that first half with possession and passing so much but then you always think but they want us to. Rafa Benitez sets his team up to want you to. So it's all well and good dominating the possession like that. We're not like Man City that can do it for 80 minutes and then score and, and win. If we don't score and then we leak a few chances, it, it can be very quickly a problem. And they did create chances. But the style of football, the intensity, the passing, the crispness of it all was something that we don't really get to watch at West Ham to be honest with you um, and so yeah it was a real enjoyable game of football to watch for the first half um, they still created chances they still could have scored still limbs on the line some of the, some of the time uh, but the second half was boring I thought you were very good I think the second half was dull though uh, I, I, Duller. I don't think Duller. it was it wasn't a thriller no um, I think you deserve to win 
Um, I think there's an evolution happening with West Ham a little bit. Um, and it's we've spoken about comparisons with David Moyes Everton a, a number of times and I think it's happening again where actually in the last few years they became very enjoyable to watch there was mm-hmm. the kind of grit and steel and determination about them but actually once they got people like Pinar and Arteta in the team they were, they were good to watch Everton and I think the same is happening with yours that the first 20 minutes I, I, I can't remember Everton kicking a ball no, the first 20 they, they minutes just completely it. dominated mm. Um, you're right, obviously, what you say, look, Rondon and Iwobi is it's like it's a massive step down, obviously, from yep. the quality of the other two. But it's worth saying, they've been without Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison for the last few weeks, right? Yeah, and we praised them after Manchester United away and other fixtures and stuff. And they've done they've done really well. I think it was, it, in hindsight, it seems inevitable that eventually they were going to run into a bad day mm-hmm. because they've been surviving with, really, that 11 again that they put out yesterday, that's mid-table shit. Yep. Once you take the two forwards out, right? Yep. So I think they've been coping very well. And you bring the two stars back in the team, I think they'll, they'll be fine. There's no major concern on that. They're in a, a little bit like Leeds. The depth of that squad, once you strip away some parts, it, is bad. Is where it's at. Yeah. I'm not looking at particularly bringing in any uh, Everton assets. Once DCL and, and Co are fit again, I'll watch them for a little while and see how they're getting on. But 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 go back to Everton in a while. They're not really for me at the moment. Well, I think a lot of people disagree with that. Well, who are you going to buy? Oh, sorry. Let's talk about Townsend, Gray, Decore. Watford at home this week. Yeah. Um, any of those three will provide a threat throughout the season. At their price, they're, they're still really good. Townsend was still very lively. I mean, he's so much more attacking than he was at Palace. Gray still loves to pop a shot off and Decore is always breaking into the box. Any of the three of them was still a threat um, with better quality in front of them. I think they will actually do better. Um, yeah, I think that's okay. Um, but not at the moment for me, for Everton. I've, I'm not really thinking of pulling any in. Yeah. No, and priority would be in Buemo over them, in oh, my opinion. Oh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Antonio, a, you keep? Uh, you having doubts about it? Or? Doubts. Not, not because... Not because he can't score in any game, but he can't, I don't see him going big in any game at the moment. Uh, Except for Sunday. Well, that's that's one that you can I think form an opinion I, I on. I think he'll destroy us um, on Sunday. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the game. Ask me again on Thursday, I won't be by then. I think my, my, my excitement for the game is going to gradually decrease as we get closer to it. Um, I, I had a tweet ready. Uh, you will know this better than me, although it's my club and I should know. Have you sent the tweet? No, I didn't. Is it one of them you wrote the tweet and went, oh, I'm going to delete it? If I write this, <laughs> uh, something bad will happen or, or the opposite, actually. But I was getting fed up with commentators saying how good West Ham are at set pieces. We have big players. We hadn't scored from a set piece from in my memory for quite a while. We scored more goals from set pieces since Moyes had come in than any other team in the Premier League. Agreed. We have been good at set pieces. We hadn't scored from a set piece for a long time. We're talking months. Um, and I was just, stop saying we're good at set pieces. Look at the, the actual data. And We've got you, big, strong you, players. And then you we scored, scored from, from a set piece. <laughs> We've got big, strong players, the likes of Dawson and Bot. Yeah, we are a threat at set pieces. But we haven't scored from one for a long time. Well, once you, have you go now. 10, 12 games without scoring from a set piece, do you... When is it? I you're bet, not good I bet, at set pieces, I bet you score from one next Sunday as well. Um, and then yeah, Agbona went and scored from a set piece, and it was a very comfortable goal. Uh, Bowen's four returns in four, quietly going about, isn't he? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. He he has been. He's taking a lot of the corners and stuff now. I, don't, I think any of them are fine. Four now's had he had his shooting boots on. I reckon could have scored as well. They're all they're all viable, all but good. The, the problem is, that in all seriousness, a, a part jest about Sunday. Obviously, it's a difficult fixture on Sunday. And actually, I think the problem is, you can say, yeah, Bowen's sort of coming onto radar a bit. You're not buying with them fixtures. No. Like the run no. you've got up until game week 16. You only won wild card in game week 16. Up until then, it's bad. I mean, you're probably, you and United are probably the two worst between now and game week 15, I'd say. Yeah, we've, we, we do have some difficult games. Which is why the three points yesterday was so important to get. This next week is very very important uh, it's not the the season it's not as far as season defining but it is very important so if we beat Genk on Wednesday we on Thursday sorry we're pretty much European qualification done uh, then we've got obviously the big game against Spurs and then we've got City in the cup so we could if we beat City go through to the next round of the League Cup having beaten them 
get through to Europa. You won't beat Man City in the cup, mate. <laughs> you keep saying it. It's, that, I really it's their trophy. Looking, they don't know, lose in I that know competition. They haven't won, lost in five years, but still. But look at the opposite. We lose to Genk. We give ourselves some work to do now in the Europa. We lose to you, which is always demoralising. And then we go out the the Euro, uh, League Cup. Could be a very negative week. But the interesting thing is you home or away Thursday home. in Europe. Home. Yeah. The if you win that, you've basically won the group. That's, you? that's it, yeah. right? So it's it's one of those. It's not season defining. If we lose a couple of these games, it's not the end of the world. But also, if we win two or three of them, it could be like okay, really, momentum is so behind us. We've not lost two games in a row under Moyes for so long, and he talked about it in his press post match. Oh, I hope you win first, did Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, fascinating, but. I was very impressed because I was going into that game nervous. I would hold a Ben Rama or if you own or even an Antonio at the moment, but then look at what you're going to do a little bit longer term. We're in no buy though, aren't we? You're not yeah. going to go and buy Antonio no, now, no, I don't think. No, 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 agreed. Newcastle 2, Spurs 3. Obviously, the takeover um, hadn't had the impact on the pitch. A game that was largely, obviously... Uh, the story and the narrative was what happened off the pitch. Did someone was it a heart attack in the end? That we I know? assume so. Yeah, uh, as far as I'm aware, the that he was, stuff. they got him stable quite and, quickly um, and stuff. Yeah, it didn't end up being uh, as much of a dramatic situation as the Ericsson one, which was on the pitch. Mm. But obviously, look, if someone's suffering that, it's dramatic regardless. Um, and, the, and the game carried on. Kane's goal. Uh, I did laugh when he was flagged offside because it was just ironic but then obviously it got overturned Our first replay there was jumps <laughs> we knew it was on once we saw the first yeah, replay yeah, yeah. um yeah i worked yep let's say but um yeah i still rather just been jumping up and down in the first instance let's talk about enough. the geordies and your tweet which was that there are 17 better teams than them in the league yes as long as Leeds get their players Act back together. fit yeah yeah in my opinion yes concern the only yeah, thing with be. Newcastle, the only thing I would say is uh, goals. They have goals in them. They scored two against you. They scored two against us. Hold on. I think we scored one for them. Okay, <laughs> fine. But still, they, you've they've... not seen Eric Dyer's goal. No, I mean, that's the end it. of it. I stopped watching the second half. Goal of the season, mate. Um, but but they have scored in quite a number of games. They scored two against Southampton. I just think yeah. they've got goals in them and. And we've discussed that a number of times. But you can be shit. If you can score goals, you can sometimes scrape through. Look, clearly now they've got the excuse to change your manager. I would be staggered if Losing Steve, to Spurs is a reason I would to be, sack your manager. I would, yeah, to be honest, yes. I, I would be staggered if Steve Bruce is in charge at Selhurst Park at the weekend. Mm-hmm. Can't see it. Me neither, um, to be fair. Can't see it. So what they do to change is very difficult to analyse what's going to happen next because we don't, there's definitely going to be a new manager whether it's this week next week the week after at some point there's going to be a new manager inevitable we obviously don't know what they're going to do to change yesterday when I saw the lineup, I became very confident because of Joel Linton playing and St. Maximin's positioning I thought they were going to play a diamond with St. Maximin up front with Wilson and I was worried about that with St. Maximin kind of having a free roll we couldn't get into the game it was restricted playing out wide St. Maximin and actually the game became so fucking easy for Tottenham. You were dominating uh, so easy. Territory as well, I yeah. never felt nervous about the game nah. at all. Even um, one nil down. From two one up. Never felt nervous about the game in, in any way. I, I wasn't even concerned. Obviously they got a late goal and you think, oh, they could throw one in the box, but we managed the last couple of minutes absolutely fine. Um decent performance from us. I, I think just to close on Newcastle, yeah. Okay, great. Takeover's done and stuff. The team's not very good. No. And if, again, if you lose Wilson St. Maximin out of that team, what is that? Got to start winning games of football. Mm. You could get to January, it might be nearly finished. I'm sure they won't be. Um, but I wouldn't I wouldn't be going now. I did some analysis for our advanced tier patron on St. Maximin last week and basically analysed that he takes on more onus without Wilson. And I think now that Wilson's back in the team, owners should strongly consider what they want to do with St. Maximin. Because he's not going to be an asset playing in the position that he played yesterday, no. in my opinion. On Spurs, good. And it's very easily been fixed by a switch of formation back to 4 2 3 1. We deserved to win the game yesterday. We deserved to beat Villa a couple of weeks ago. Much better. Last two league games have been good. Yep. Sonny's at 10.1. I, I don't think anyone needs uh, any sales pitch on Sonny. He's the one that I'm really looking at. Kane um, probably is too expensive when you can get Sonny. One of the ones that I was interested in asking your opinion on, 
we because and then it's, it feels like it's knee jerky because he scored is Ndombele. No. You talked about uh, he needs to play games consistently, start games to build some momentum, and you thought maybe that I thought he was great. Nuno yesterday. had uh, taken the view that if I take him out of the team, it's going to affect his yes. confidence. Let me just keep playing him, keep yes. playing him. He's five point eight million though. He's not an FBO asset. You don't think he's no got chance. goals and assists? No in him. way, mate. When he plays that high up, he's I, basically I, number ten, right? Yeah. He'd have to be under five million, I think, to consider him. Under five, Tottenham's I, I, number it, ten. He's not going to get. I'm saying he's not going to. He's not going to get a lot of goals. Okay. Okay. Is, 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 your, he, a, your, is he a better asset than Embuemo or even the Everton boys? He's playing in a better team. <laughs> is he? <laughs> I mean, he's at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. That that's the the thing is like Spurs number ten for five point eight million with two goal scorers in Kane and Son to provide ammunition for. This is this is the logical argument that I'm thinking about with Ndombele. I'm not going to go near him because I still feel like he's one week away from disappearing and not being in the team. Lo Celso comes in. But I, I do think he's priced pretty cheap. Like if he was consistently getting games, it wouldn't... I'll, I would have a bet with you that he won't score more than five league goals this season. More than five? You know, you do those bets with um, Sham, two guys, one cup. No, because he's, I, has I don't, he paid you for the Jack Wilshire no, bet? Of yeah. course he hasn't. I don't <laughs> want to take Shams' money. FPL bus team noted down and don't believe not more than five league goals this season. This whole season, I'll take your word for it. It's your team more than it is is, is mine. No, he doesn't. I mean, it's a cracking goal he got yesterday. Yes, and if took he get, it well. If he gets into those sort of positions more, he he can he can do the business. He did score at Wolves in the cup the other week as well, which he finished very well after kind of bumbling through a half-hearted clearance in the first instance. I thought he was so good yesterday. And I'm really pleased because he was the one that I would have left out from the Villa game. I would have played Lo Celso because I think Lo Celso actually top end is a little bit more creative for Harry and Sonny. And I think it was important we got that back into the team. But Tangi yesterday, very, very good. He'll kick that shirt. Nice to see him play 90 minutes. He didn't go unnoticed that we made no substitutes, which I thought was really, really strange considering we've had a lot of players who've played a lot during the international break. Like, to be honest, we in the pub were very much of the opinion once Shelby was sent off, get the South American players off the pitch. Take them off now. Yeah. Let, let them rest. Excuse me. But no, he didn't. And I wonder if there was kind of a, a bit of a message in there, in that, that actually, look, these 11 boys have got the shirt now. These 11 boys are doing well. So these 11 boys are going to stay on the pitch. I think it's a message to the squad actually, that he didn't make any substitutions yesterday. Harry is Harry. I don't need to repeat what I say on this podcast every week about Harry, um, but I wouldn't be buying now. No. Nah, nah. And actually, same applies to Sonny. I don't think there's a need to force it in. West Ham away, United at home, Everton away. And if I was wildcarding now, I think Sonny would definitely go in. And Sonny would remain the priority for me because Sonny can score once and... How many, how, how many FPL points do you get, SD, Sonny? Sonny, that's a very good question. Um, I've got the he can, he can score me. once and hit double points and stuff, right? Yeah, if he's yeah, a scorer yeah. in a one. I'm guessing it's probably just a seven yesterday for Sonny. No, nine. You got nine. Did we get two bonus? Uh, yes, <laughs> he did. 51 points. I think Sonny's returns and, and scores have just gone a bit under the radar because Salah's just been like head, head and shoulders above everybody. But Sonny, 51 points from eight games. I don't. The average of that is what, six six points a game, just a bit more. I'll be buying Sonny as long as he's fit uh, in game week twelve, possibly earlier. Um, if it's a case I've got injuries and therefore I just make the moves earlier, but definitely want to buy him in twelve, and I definitely want to buy Harry Kane in twelve as well. Because mm. Tottenham have Leeds at home, Burnley away, Brentford at home, Norwich at home, twelve to fifteen, and Harry Kane needs to do some catching up for that golden boot and he will do some catching up I'm fairly certain of it yep. so I want him for that period and then we've got a really kind of nasty few fixtures after that from game week 16 is there anyone wildcard in game week 16? Uh, no but I feel like <laughs> wherever the listeners are listening to this podcast they should uh, hit subscribe because you'll get notified in game week 16 when we do James' wildcard special um, I, I'm just kick, kicking my wildcard forward until I need do you know it. why I've mentioned this so many times? Because I get asked so fucking often. Well, when you wildcard? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Every week. Let's go into the Twitter questions. Question number one from everyone. When are you wildcarding, James? <laughs> I think game week 16, I think. <laughs> yes, indeed. We are going to get into the Twitter questions. We've got a few. I think, actually, 
we're going to be able to uh, smash through loads by just simply solving the Rom Ron debate, which is what it's called, the Ron Ronaldo to Lukaku. We've um, covered it, and we've covered it. So I still think it's the right move to make yeah. for the next three. I would make it. We'll cover off another couple of our questions. To be honest with you, I'd make it for a minus four if as necessary. well. Uh, before we do get into it, uh, Upkar, can Such pour a drink over his tablet before to save time <laughs> on the pod this week? And FP Ariel, Chris wants to know how it is. How is my laptop? It's tablet more than a laptop. Tablet is fine. It's working a okay. Keyboard, I've got no N key. It's fucked. So I need to buy a new <laughs> keyboard. And the keyboard's where the T predominantly went into. So keyboard's screwed, but uh, it's fine. It's replaceable. A lot of people pointed out, because I posted the video on Twitter as well. A lot of people posted that you'd kind of just run off to get the tissues while I was kind of left trying to save the thing for you. It just <laughs> looked like just, you, uh, you disappeared out of shot. I didn't watch it back. I need to uh, watch it back. But yes, uh, the it's all liquid good. that came off the surface of that, mate. It's, no it joke. It is working fine, A-OK, -okay, but the, the keyboard is well and truly up shit creek. Uh, what do the listeners have to look forward to the rest of this week, James? Oh, good question. And what do uh, I have to record with you? This is my chance to know right uh, now. It's Friday deadline this week, so that means Tidy. that means change of schedule. I cannot be doing Ask James on a Friday and then doing the deadline streams. Ask James will be tomorrow on Tuesday, uh, 3 p.m. UK time. Audio will follow afterwards. Wednesday will be Sky Fantasy Football. Thursday's Clash of the Correspondents, Crystal Palace versus Newcastle with Tavius and FPL Footballer. Uh, Friday will be People's Poll. It probably will be FPL related. I'll stick a vote out for that on Thursday. Uh, Patreon pods this week, Q and A today. Uh, Champions League preview tomorrow for UCL Fantasy. Uh, Tottenham Wednesday, Thursday quiz by FPL Mango, and Friday game week nine preview. Lovely, jubbly sounds <clears throat> good. Uh, right, let's get into the question. We we'll start at the top and work our way down. I'm James. so impressed that my brain has remembered anything. For yeah, this yeah. James, James is surviving. <laughs> uh, I think uh, do you want a double Big Mac for lunch to soak yes. up the booze. Yeah, all I'm going to get mate. James a double Big Mac for, for for lunch to, to soak up <laughs> the booze. Literally, and I woke the up. Victory yesterday. I woke up this morning on the sofa, and I had no recollection of going to sleep, thinking of going to sleep, why I was on the sofa. If she'd fucking said, don't come to bed, you bastard. Or, yeah. like, I had no recollection. Like, no time. Where's my phone? Can't find my phone. Mm. It was charging, wasn't it? She put it what? on charge for me because I fell asleep, bless her. Yeah. What a uh, sweetheart. I was, I was about to... I had to get up because I didn't know what the time was. I didn't know if it was 5am or 8am. I didn't have a clue. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask you what your plans were before the game on Sunday, but let's take that off air because uh, we don't want to be making our social diaries and stuff. But I, I'm my Sunday next week, I'm planning on having a similar Sunday to your Sunday this week um, because, of course... Do I need to give Tom Campbell a call for the podcast I'm gonna next be, Monday? Yeah, yeah, give him a shout. <laughs> I'm going to be one year older on Friday, but then Saturday, not Sunday, not only... Is it birthday this week? It's Friday, mate. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Are we having a party? Uh, we're having a party on Sunday if we beat you <laughs> but the plan is to uh, fuck your to party have a, have a drink before the game and also we've got uh, it's United Liverpool straight after so um, when I was talking to, to my brother and my mate oh, I'd the not game, even give that a fault I'm thinking just stick around down there and watch the United Liverpool game afterwards potentially um, so it might probably end up, a bit safer that I get out of there uh, you'll be alright yeah no, I won't. <laughs> well, are you planning on coming dressed as a, a cock? Then yes, and I mean a cock rule. As I dress, to a, try and penis. dress as a cock every yeah. day. What difference does it make? Uh, Stian, uh, when your wife uses just Stian, screen, I know you know Stian. Stian. But read out his therapy handle. underscore. Oh, well, his, his handle is actually Bosdal Stian. But therapy underscore FPO. If you search him, you'll find him. He's well worth a follow. When your wife uses the phrase "it's fine" or "I'm fine." Do you believe them or hide in the bathroom like all men do until you think it's safe to come home? Literally. So when she does things, I just go, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I know you're looking for a ride so I'm yeah. not going to give just, you one. Just ignore it. And and when a worst fails, I just say, sorry. She says, what are you saying sorry for? I'm just preempting what I need to say to you in yeah, 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, dear. Um, I don't get too much passive aggressive. It's fine for my, my missus. She just tells it how it is. Mine she doesn't. Just tells it how mine, it is. mine needs to sort it out. Yeah, I had she to, also I needs the wild card. I think that's a Patreon pod coming up soon, guys. The the conversation with my wife on WhatsApp this morning was was fucking the one, mate. She just sent me a message saying, um, "By the way, there is a massive turd where the bins are." <laughs> was I around your house last night? <laughs> oh shit! 
I said to her, that was me. I thought I cleaned it up. <laughs> she goes, it's disgusting. I said, sorry. She goes, since you did it, you clean it up. <laughs> I didn't do a turd outside my house. Must be the foxes are out there. FPL governor, you're stuck on a desert island and a genie appears who oh, offers you... I don't you like where this is going. A solar-powered fridge with a lifetime supply of chocolate. But you can only choose one of these four. Double-deckers, curly Whirlies, Revels, or Toblerone? It's a chocolate question. Yeah, which one would you have? <laughs> Toblerone, for me. Especially if it's fridge. Toblerone is a good a chocolate that's best when it's solid, hard. As opposed to melted. Soft and chewy, <laughs> yeah. I don't like soft and chewy. I need to crunch my Toblerone. I, I, so. I do like a double-decker, but I'm I think, not so but I, think it's, I think it's one of them. No. Really? Yeah, double decker feels a little bit recycled, like a whisper, a bit yeah, hollow on the inside. That's why I like that shit. Yeah, um, yeah. The crapper it is Poor the more quality, I like it. Yeah. I think double decker, you'd get a bit sickly of it after a while, though. So I'm going to go Revels, actually, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Revels are good. You don't know what you're going to get. I'm not so, so keen on Well, at least it keeps it kind of fresh, isn't it? Oh, which one's it going to be today? Oh, mm. is it the fucking coffee one? Bollocks. <laughs> uh, Matt uh, says uh, are you, why are people still buying Antonio he's still a good asset and he's still cheap at 8 million and West Ham is still creating chances and still scoring goals and why w- and would you sell him for Tony DCL or Wilson next week none of the above next week I'd buy Iheanacho interesting maybe interesting DCL um, I'd want to see him fit I don't think I'm close to buying Ian Acho, personally. Mm. I, I need to see a little bit more at the moment. Um, plus, I feel like Leicester have had my balls and a fucking vice for most of this FPL season with Ricardo Pereira as well. Yeah. Um, no, he's not going yet. I think game week 11 is the time to to look and move it. But yeah, of course, you you could go Antonio to Ian Acho this week. If Calvert-Lewin's back fit, I think that's quite interesting for a very short term. And Tony, Tony's run starts like whenever mm. you can go now you could make that move next week it's just it's not a move I'm going to be making for a minus four no and I need to fix other shit first yeah FPL Rodney uh, non-FPL related what's the best goal for and against your teams that you've witnessed in person at the lane or uh, the London Stadium or Upton Park or whatever over the years um, yeah uh, yours Rodney also says PS on last week's debate I'd defo go with the chocolate flavored shit as opposed to the uh, shit flavored chocolate. Shit flavored chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, Gareth Bell against you. That's that's the best goal scored against West Ham at Upton Park isn't it? that you've seen live. I think it's seen. No, live. I'm, I'm answering the question for you, mate. Nah, Andy Carroll overhead kick. I don't know. Was that at London Stadium, Upton Park? I can't remember. Uh, that was well, against Palace the other year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, uh, a while um, back. That, that was, was a good that goal. was at the shopping centre. Shopping centre. Yeah, there we go. Uh, best goal I've seen live scored against us was that the question for or, for and against for or against uh, for uh, favourite is still the Harry Kane mask goal at White Hart Lane uh, I say Sonny against Burnley in the new place mm. great, gonna, great assist from Jan Vertonghen. I'm going to uh, also uh, only because uh, Rodney it was tweeted today by West Ham it came up on my phone it's a year ago today 18th of October that Lanzini faded it into the top corner so that's not a bad goal didn't see it mate Neither. Covid yeah, yeah, yeah. Could, Covid uh, uh, goals against us <laughs> can't think yeah. I remember blinding goal Ryan Geek's got first Premier League season at White Lane. <laughs> it's worth a look on YouTube for the kids Farlander wants to know if we should worry about Jimenez not starting the last match no no nah, it's Mexico it's job. all because he was away in South America with Mexico and came back late so yeah nothing nothing at all um, we had a uh, question that's a joke but also followed up by someone else that's asked a more sensible question oh, I don't know I'm not oh, saying I love this sensible, sensible questions that follow well, jokes this one's not sensible why haven't you bought that purple shirt yet James it's from uh, <laughs> Peter uh, cannot answer because it's shit maybe I cannot uh, answer because it's shit yeah uh, but can't FPL, afford it <laughs> that's also uh, funny FPL Dougal does <laughs> say though are football kits trying to be too different these days the Spurs one they wore today and the away kit are bordering on mental I actually don't mind that purple one like I don't I don't hate it yeah it, it feels weird that we're so traditional with our home kit 
so traditional like if they tried to change your kit from white and blue you'd go mental but with the away kit we let them do whatever the fuck they want well yeah, within reason team, we don't put red on it and stuff like no, that right? No, no. But, but every team has a away kit that's probably regarded as their classic away kit like Arsenal yellow and blue ours is light blue with the two claret stripes going across that's the classic away kit that we've had and it seems to make an appearance every, every other game. year and then disappears and in between you get some random shit like what's your classic away kit um well the, the first was just the opposite of the home kit so blue navy navy, navy blue yeah. shirt uh white shorts and stuff um then there's been lighter yellows yeah through the, through i feel the, like lighter yellow is more and then you get things pop up and become like green has become associated now because of the Champions League run and yeah, the games yeah. in Manchester yeah. and Amsterdam. We'd never wore green before. The <laughs> fuck? Now it's, we, we got an association with green because of that Champions League run. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they are a bit crazy. But then there's quite a few kits that I do like. I like Chelsea's, Chelsea's home kit this year. With the textures and the squares and everything going on. I do like Chelsea's home kit. Uh, Upkar. Which would be... Uh, would... His real question... Would you care to speculate why Adam Armstrong was benched just as a confidence, just as a confidence building fixture run has commenced? Why was Adam Armstrong dropped? Because um, Broha played well. Yeah, I, I, I actually think it's just that he's forcing his way into the team. For, good for all we know, that um, Broha's trained better yeah. over the last couple of weeks. Mm. Don't know. He obviously, excuse me, he wants to keep Redmond in the team at the moment. Yeah. Um, so they, you look like you've got three forwards fighting for one spot that's why with Broha I wouldn't be rushing there at the moment so we see a bit more mm. FPL Roberto if you had to have the same evening meal tea dinner tea for the northerners up here that call it tea Gravy. Like tea dinner every day for the rest of your life what would you choose chicken 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 mm. I mean, my classic always is sausage, chips and beans. And I'm almost tempted to say, should we have sausage, chips and beans over double Big Mac today? But we'll leave that open. I might fucking have both. <laughs> <laughs> One's breakfast, is it? Oh, yeah, this is the super Big Mac. I've just clucked as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's massive. Double patties. Yeah, 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 yeah. let's get that shit. Um, yeah, what would you choose? Same meal, rest of your life. Chicken. Chicken. Yeah, I'd eat that fresh I don't know if I'd day. do sausage, chips and beans. I think if I had to, I'm going to be... I'm going to give two answers. My classic, I, I'd, I'd pick a chicken Caesar salad because I do like a chicken Caesar salad and I'd live a longer life if I ate a, a salad. I would not day. on that chicken. Um, but sausage, chips and beans with a dollop of ketchup. Oof, that's what I quite fancy for lunch. <laughs> Peter, I've had loads of question DMs recently about um, like people going to the NFL and stuff. It's been at Tottenham the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Where's the best place to eat? <laughs> it's me genuinely going, go to the fried chicken shop. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Benny McGelly, will there ever be a boy born who can swim faster than a shark? No. Do you get that reference? No. It's uh, it's from The Office, the UK version of The Office. Will there ever be a boy born fast who can swim faster than a shark? Well, we know it's impossible. But FPL Kaka, as in Kaka the player. Kaka. What are your favourite TV shows ever? Uh, Monday Night Football. I quite enjoy it. Um, I used to like Only Fools personally Only Fools and Horses was classic classic um, do you know what I saw recently um, which I didn't think I would enjoy but actually I did enjoy was Friends again so they did that reunion what in the summer or whatever when they, they all got together and then you, I watched back a few episodes from the clips triggered by the clips that were in that show and I was like actually this was quite funny for its time I thought it was a bit stupid and childish. it was actually really funny um, so Friends was pretty good as well but U US Office is the greatest TV series ever by far and away that's going to get me loads of replies that I don't need just at Sajjan Shah please not me yeah do it uh, talking about TV shows James because we're, we're off on a tangent here that's just so non-FPL but you know we're giving people Why some not? FPL help who's the Baselli FPL underscore Latic so I'm assuming a Wigan fan how desperate would you have to be to participate in Squid Game? You've not watched it yet, have you? No, I haven't got time for TV. Squid Game's wicked. So, uh, how desperate would you have to be? Yeah, really desperate. I'm not going to participate in any shit that could if result Mourinho, in death. If, if Mourinho was still Tottenham manager, I'd participate. 
If that had been the end game, get rid of him. Well, like, put, put me if, in the if, queue. If Mourinho got a lifetime unbreakable contract to be Spurs manager, James Mourinho, Mourinho is die. so blatantly going to be Newcastle manager at some point. Roma are doing all Absolute right. Absolute certainty. Yeah, Roma are doing all right though. Fifth, sixth in the table. Terrific. Yeah, they're not doing badly. Um, talking of Squid Game, we have a Halloween party at work on uh, at the end of the month, 29th. I am going to be fancy dress as the boss man from Squid Game. Uh, that's I've decided that that's going to be my fancy dress costume of choice. This means nothing to me. No, it doesn't. Um, but that's going to be my fancy dress costume of choice. And we're also going to be playing Squid Game. There's going to be no death involved. <laughs> But I am going to replicate in the, the office. Home. I'm going to be replicating some of the Squid Games um, for 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 the tournament. So here's a Squid Game is mad in that if you if you fail in the task, you get shot, you die. My kids, seven and nine, are asking about Squid Squid Game. Oh shit! They know about Squid Game because uh, there are computer game versions of squid game what already in roblox and stuff yeah yeah now you don't die obviously and they're just playing like kids games within the context of it and they know about being eliminated and all that stuff so my my seven-year-old he's going to get a squid game costume for the fantasy dress party as well if they want to know wife, about elimination just take him to man west wife, man city next my week, wife mate. wouldn't uh let me dress him up he, he's got school fancy dress on wednesday she said, no, he can't go dressed as a Squid Game character in that because the school would disapprove. I was like, why? And, you know, they've seen people die in TV shows and stuff before. I'm sure they can watch Squid Game. Don't dress your kid up as a character from Jump Squid Jump in Game. the comments. Is it okay for a seven and nine-year-old to watch Squid Game? I'm going to say games no. Just bit. This is one for you, James. Nasa Kamali. Is Oliver Skip properly appreciated by Spurs fans? Uh, that's a good question. Probably not. Probably not. Don't think it's coincidental that he came on a pitch at Arsenal when we stopped getting opened up all over the fucking place and, and he's played the last couple of games and we've been better. Mm. He looks out for Hoiberg and Hoiberg needs someone to look out. I thought he was great yesterday, by the way, Hoiberg. I mean, Hoiberg needs someone to look out for him. And it's good. It allows Hoiberg to do the things that he is good at. I think as a pair, they're they're good. I said really a few weeks ago, this yeah. will be the best short-term solution for Tottenham is for them two to play together. Mm. I'm glad that the managers figured out the same. And the importance being that skips the deeper as opposed to an, an, an Hoiberg sitting and skip doing... I think the, sometimes, I think like sometimes with Oli, you can watch games and you probably are not even noticing he's there. Yeah. And that's not... In his position, that's not necessarily a bad thing. No. Let's wrap up with one last question, James, and then you can um, drink water and soak up the... Uh, kind of fucking McDonald's <laughs> and edit this. <laughs> well, get it delivered, mate. It's the easiest way. Obviously. FPL face-off. You're probably too humble to answer. This is definitely aimed at me, this question. <laughs> but you're one of my favourite football analysts. I really do appreciate the praise. Thank you. Do you think you could have a positive impact at a professional club and in what role? So... Take the football analyst side out of it and you can answer your question. I'm going to answer with my answer. So, because I'm not a football analyst by any stretch. But one of the things I would love to do post carrier bag salesman career is to work as a uh, psychologist, club psychologist, because that's where I reckon I could have a positive impact at a club. Like just going around and bigging up the players and getting inside their heads and making sure they're motivated to fuck for every single game. I would love to do that because I do feel like uh, they're probably some of the most complicated and difficult characters to work with in terms of that kind of man management. But I like man management and the, the stuff that comes with it in a career and work. So being able to do that would be where I think I could add value at a professional club. Um, that would be fascinating for me. But yeah. And what about you? Because you are... Well, no one wanted your one opinion. One of his favourite football analysis, analysts. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh I'd Tottenham need a scout as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, Do you? You don't like the signings that have been coming? Uh, I, well, I, I think Tottenham are trying to go back to the buying young and that's what we need to do. Um, so, yeah. I, I think, actually, I'd probably be a defensive coach. Defensive coach is where I you think, think you know so. It's also, um, I was just thinking about it while he was talking, it's probably easier to coach defensive rather than offensive. 
in terms of strategies and plays because defensive a lot of it's just about positioning isn't it perhaps with the attacking players quite often you don't do a lot of coaching and you leave it to raw talent mm. and and some of those guys just deliver because they're that fucking good teaching Ronaldo how to shoot um, me, you know, whereas I... defenders there are fewer that just can live off natural ability and there are more that need coaching yeah I agree with that mm. so it'd be it'd be harder I think um, to coach defensively but depends like is, is, you're as good as the tools you have to work with right at the end of the of day of course the other thing you could do as a job within a football club is exactly what the question you can be an ad- analyst right yeah these guys will employ a yeah. full time analysis yeah. now yeah. yeah well when we get to 10,000 patrons we'll be making enough money to buy a football club is that right uh, I don't know I just made those numbers up <laughs> but I want to buy a football club all right can everyone jump, jump on Patreon like, if, like, if, if every listener jumped on Patreon we could have a go I don't think so. No. I watched the little video the other day about uh, Wrexham and you know when they got bought out oh, by Ryan true, Reynolds yeah, yeah. and whatever else. It was still a million and a half or two million they had to pay for oh, that. We're going lower than that, mate. <laughs> we need to go low. Yeah, we're going low. <laughs> Enfield Town, here we come. We're probably lower. Right. If you'd like to support the show and help us buy a football <laughs> club, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash planet FPL. Uh, and support the show starts from as little as three pounds um and if you go all the way to the advanced tier with 14 pounds not only do you get access to exclusive videos prize league slap channel meetups all that kind of good stuff um you get to keep the show going as well and we do appreciate all of the support we we don't need the big sales pitch but you can head over there and find out uh what you do and don't like about it um and it's a one month commitment so if you do it for a month and you don't really enjoy it and you think all of our other patreons are you know knobheads and you don't want to interact with them then you won't um, you might think our content shit you won't think yeah, patrons yeah, yeah. are knobheads they're, 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 they're the best <laughs> bunch of people on the planet so uh, you can go over there and support uh, the show and we would really appreciate it you've been given the pitch on the rest of the content for this week so it just leaves me to say thank you for tuning in appreciate the support stay safe ciao for now thanks everyone be nice to each other cue music please man child <laughs>